hey, let's talk about how to deal with multiple bonds. So consider a problem where you have something like carbon dioxide. Here's the thing. If you do it right, you should wind up with a multiple bond that looks like this. Now, how do we know that? We need to go back and do a quick review. How do you know it's not single bonds like this, but rather double bonds like this? In order to answer that, we need to check out a quick review of the things you're supposed to do in order to properly come up with a Lewis structure. So remember, you count your valence electrons first, and then once you're done counting your valence electrons, you can then build the molecule and then add electrons until you have the correct total number and then check again against the Duet and Octet rules to make sure every atom has the right number of electrons around it. So we do that for the carbon dioxide. So let me get back to the carbon dioxide example. Here it is again. We did that first, we did that first step first. We counted the valence electrons and then we put together a structure and then we spread the valence electrons over the structure. And this is really important though, we only put the correct number. It says 16 valence electrons. And so if you count up those electrons that we put on there, remember each dot represents an electron, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 16 electrons. Now we need to point out when you're done with this, never add more than the right number. If you have 16 electrons, don't add more than 16. You've got to check if it's right though. So there's 16 just like there should be, but if you check how many atoms or how many electrons are in each atom, there's a problem because this has eight, two, four, six, eight. So that oxygen's good. This has eight because two, four, six, and eight. Yes, this oxygen is good, but this carbon only has two, four electrons. It's supposed to have eight, not four. So it doesn't have an octet, meaning it's not a valid structure, and you got to do the multiple bonds in order to make it work. Now, wait, how am I supposed to do that? Well, you can take a non-bonding pair and move it, because electrons, if not shared, are an unbonding pair. When they become shared, they become a bond. So this right here becomes, sorry, not that, becomes one of these bonds right here. So you're adding a second bond because you're turning a lone pair into a bonding pair of electrons. So if we check this out, two, four, six, eight electrons, 10, 12, 14, 16, there's still 16. We just rearranged them. And now this oxygen has two, four, six, and eight. So it's good. This oxygen has two, four, six, and eight. So it's good. And this carbon has two, four, six and eight electrons so it is also good that makes this a valid structure so uh oh let me remove that little mark right there actually uh there we go now there is a, an animation on this page that helps to make that clear check what's happening to these lone pairs see how they're being moved and turned into bonding pairs of electrons because electrons by themselves are just a lone pair but when shared they become a chemical bond Okay, so that's what's going on now. Make sure you've taken a moment to copy down on the steps here because it does bring up some important points. As in like, be organized about what you're doing. Don't just randomly jump in there and start making double and triple bonds all over the place. Try out single bonds first. If they don't work, then you can try out a double bond. If that doesn't work, you can try out a triple bond. Okay, but what's really important is don't add or subtract electrons while attempting to do this. Keep the number of electrons the same as it was, because if you have 16 valence electrons, you need to end with 16 valence electrons. You can't add or subtract in order to make things work. All right, now, have you mentioned that? I did mention triple bonds earlier. Let's define single, double, and triple bonds before jumping into the example of nitrogen as a triple bonded one. So remember that shared electrons form a covalent bond. So one pair of electrons is one bond. Two pair of electrons is two bonds. So that means two electrons in one bond. If you have two bonds, that's a grand total of four electrons. You've got three bonds, that's a grand total of six electrons. Okay. So uh, let me, there we go. Anyway, triple bond, nitrogen. Check out what happens. If you have just nitrogen, 
you count up how many electrons it has. Valence electrons, nitrogen has five valence electrons. So two nitrogens makes 10 valence electrons. So we just put the nitrogens together like this, two nitrogens, and just spread out uh, the two, four, six, eight, ten 10 valence electrons. And that's all fine. But the thing is, it's fine that we've got them spread out. It's not fine in the sense that we don't have eight on this nitrogen. It's only got six. And likewise, the southern nitrogen only has six valence electrons. So that's definitely not good. So what we do then is we take a non-bonding pair and make it into a bonding pair. So, uh, all right, we do that. And that's what happens on this next one right here. So we move to a bonding pair. It becomes a double bond. We check the nitrogen on the right has eight electrons. That's good, but the nitrogen on the left still has only six. So we take another lone pair and do the exact same thing. We can take it and we can make it into a shared electron. So let's do that. So now this bottom left one, that nitrogen with a triple bond, this is something that we can call workable. Why can we call this workable? Because 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, it's got 10 electrons still. And this nitrogen has access to 8 electrons. That's right, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And the nitrogen on the left, on the right has access to 2, 4, 6, and 8 valence electrons. So they both have 8, and they have the correct number of electrons. Therefore, it is a valid structure. So that's an example of what a triple bond looks like. So having talked about double and triple bonds, let's also mention the what happens with a polyatomic ion. Remember, poly means many. So an ion, a charged particle composed of multiple atoms, an example is the ammonium NH4. So here's what we do when we set it up. We count how many valence electrons in the NH4. So one nitrogen is five electrons. Four hydrogens is four more valence electrons for a total of nine. Remember that if something's positive, you, add, you subtract an electron, unlike negative things where you add an electron. So we subtract that one electron from the total. So we had nine, subtract one, make it positive, so that's eight valence electrons. So now you have your eight valence electrons is the total that that should be there. You put your molecule together and then make sure you have eight valence electrons. So two, four, six, eight, okay, we're good. The next thing you do after that is then you check that you have the right number on each atom. So small atoms like hydrogen follow the duet rule. So this has two. That's good. And the same is true for this one, this one, and this one also. So all of your hydrogens are happy. And what about your nitrogen? Two, four, six, eight. It satisfies the octet rule. It's a satisfactory structure. Great. One last thing. Remember how we said it's positive? That's why you need this. Brackets in charge for anything that carry, that is not neutral. Anything that carries a positive or negative charge must have brackets in charge. So that's why this down here is your final answer that you would want for any kind of charged molecule. Oops, there we go. Now, next, resonance structures. What is resonance? Resonance is more than one Lewis structure is valid for a molecule. So consider the carbonate ion. I could give on a test to a student this formula, CO3, 2 minus, and they should be able to come up with a structure like this, or this, or this as in a carbon in the middle and oxygen spread out around it. Now, what is this business on here all about? First of all, it's a two minus charge, so that's why you have brackets in charge on all of these. But notice only one of the oxygens has a double bond on it. And the question is, why does that double bond have to be there? It could have been here or it could have been here. So since it could have been here, you'll notice one of the drawings has it in that exact location. Since it could have been here, you'll notice one of the drawings has it in that exact location. That's because they are all equally possible locations. And so we draw this in the structure in order to emphasize the fact that they are all valid structures. Now in real life, it gets a little weird. It turns out that you can actually have um, the bond existing in both places at once, like what you see here in this one on the right here, the CH3 with the N in the middle. 
So this right here is an example of something else that has resonance. The bond can be in more than one place at once. So not everything with resonance is going to have the brackets in charge. I mean, look at this down here. This is called ozone. It's O3. But look, that bond could be here or it could be here. And so that's why you've got both forms of it drawn. Or this is NO3 minus, a.k.a. the nitrate ion. And these represent the fact that these are resonance structures. Now, on an exam, a student would be given a formula such as CO3 2 minus and expected to draw a structure and recognize that the bond, double bond could be in multiple places, therefore recognizing that it has the potential to have resonance. I should emphasize resonance is not found in all molecules. Some, such as, for example, this one, do not have resonance because there's no other way to arrange these electrons. If you move anything around, you're going to violate one of the rules, the octet or the duet rules. Uh, this one, too. You, there is no way to rearrange the electrons in this nitrogen. If you make a quadruple bond on one, you're going to have too many on one atom, one nitrogen, and it's not going to work. Like, if you made one of these lone pairs into a quadruple bond, one nitrogen would be good, and one nitrogen would have 10 electrons, and that's not workable. So, not every multiple bond is a resonance structure. Although it's possible for single bonds to be resonance structures, most of the time it's a multiple bond involved. But just to emphasize, like here, there's no way to move any of these electrons around. It will violate an octet or duet rule somewhere. So with that being said, that is a quick overview of what we talked uh, Well, let's do a quick review. So we talked about multiple bonds, and we talked about polyatomic ions and how you got to put brackets in charge, and we talked about resonance structures. All right, there we have it.